Previously on Forced Adversity. My culture soldier, I order you, get the context cube and kill context cap. <laughs> Let's get some context. The context cue. What? What is? What is this? And now the conclusion. <clears throat> the mic is coming off the stand for this one, folks. It's getting crazy over here. It's the Fourth of July, Independence Day. And there are some pretty silly, bad faith videos, articles, and tweets going around that uh, I feel like now's a good time to address. The diarrhea cold take that I'm referring to uh, is, it's being said by several people, but just here's an example right here. This f***ing clown says we should abolish Marvel. The claim is that the new Marvel series, United States of Captain America, depicts Steve Rogers, Captain America, as someone who hates America. That's quite a claim. How could Marvel do this to Cap, right? Like. What, what even is happening? Does he use his super strength, his, his super stamina, and his super mind for strategy to, like, uh, dismantle the government? Does he enslave all the real patriots and take their guns away and make them salute Marx? No. No, he doesn't. But does he revert back to the fascist form that he was in during the Secret Empire event? You know, the time that he became a Hydra agent and all the free speech patriots burned their comic books? Is it like that? Nope. Aside from that story being taken way out of context by rage baiters on the right and the left, it's actually a damn good story if anybody actually bothered to read it. If you did read it, you'd know it's explicitly anti-fascist, which is probably why certain people don't like it. And in hindsight, it actually predicted a lot of the stuff that's taken place in the last five years. I plan to cover it eventually on my other channel, Anomic Comics, so, you know, subscribe to that and whatnot. For America. No, in this comic we see Steve Rogers reflecting on his legacy, the legacy of being Captain America, and how different groups of people see him, his shield, and by allegorical extension, America. Sound familiar? If you watched the show Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you know the show's central theme was the legacy of Cap and how we can redefine that legacy to include historically marginalized people going forward. Sam Wilson, after a season of hesitation and doubt, uh, eventually dons the mantle of Captain America with the hope of making his shield much larger, figuratively speaking. If Cap's shield represents the ardent defense of America's alleged ideals, then we must be honest about those who have been left outside of that shield's protection historically. There's a lot of varied opinions on what Captain America should represent, but the people who say this comic depicts Steve Rogers hating America have either not read it or are of the opinion that any criticism of America's flaws is equal to hatred of America. Neither of those are valid opinions. This ignores the 80 plus years of Captain America's history, much of which includes him being extremely vocal about the nation's glaring hypocrisies. In the Civil War event, both the 2006 comics and the 2016 film, we see Cap rebel against a new system, breaking bonds of friendship to stay true to his ethics. Both versions act as allegory for the surveillance state and criticize the government use of force for political purposes, throwing bodies at unjust conflicts while sitting on their hands when true injustices occur. Which, um, happens in real life. But Cap's anti-authoritarian streak has been there all along. For instance, in the first Captain America film, sure, he enlists in the army to fight Nazis, but as soon as that becomes inconvenient, as soon as what the army is doing is inconvenient for what he thinks is right, such as going to rescue Bucky and the rest of his comrades, he, he rebels against that system too. In Captain America the Winter Soldier, Cap learns that S.H.I.E.L.D., the organization he works for, is planning to spy on the U.S. and global citizens as like a preemptive war on terror tactic. Sound familiar? Not just that, but S.H.I.E.L.D. had been corrupted by Nazi splinter group Hydra. The World Security Council, which oversees S.H.I.E.L.D. in the MCU, is helpless to stop any of it. Captain America's distrust of government oversight is a pragmatic way to look at things. Because the fact is, administrators, administrations, governments are not objective. They're not constantly making the right choices for everybody. And if you think they are, uh, you're stupid. In both versions of Civil War, the comics and the film, 
The problems the authorities are trying to fix with superheroes and vigilantes and such, they're not solved by more bureaucracy. That's the reason superheroes must exist in the first place, right? That's the reason that there are activists and advocates working outside of the government now and all the time, because if they're if the government was doing everything, you know, for everybody and taking care of people and stuff, we wouldn't need that. Just like in the comics, we wouldn't need superheroes. All that bureaucracy does is transfers the lack of personal accountability to a committee so that accountability just disappears, like, like nobody is held accountable for decisions made, right? The GRC in Falcon and the Winter Soldier was just like that. It was a committee that was put together to make these decisions for large groups of people who had no power, no voice in what was happening to them. And then whatever decisions were made by the GRC, it's just, you know, it's not like one person did it, it's just some committee did it, right? They can wash their hands of it as individuals. But these more modern film adaptations aren't the only examples of Cap's resistance to the state. He rebelled against political regimes and comics released during the Nixon, Reagan, and Bush Jr. administrations, with those stories depicting those presidents in uh, negative lights. In those comics, corrupt politicians attempt to harness him as an agent, but Cap goes rogue, fighting for his own ideals. He rejects the assumption that the name Captain America is a conservative moniker, and he uses his own cultural leverage to publicly criticize the state. This was in the 70s, and the 80s, and the 2000s. It's not new. Maybe you think it's new because you've just become politically aware in the last few years, and that's, that's fair, but you gotta take a step back. Maybe his criticism is striking a nerve with you because of your specific brand of politics, and uh, maybe that nerve needs to be struck. So if Cap isn't a goon for the state, if he's not a conservative icon, if he doesn't just abide by whatever the current administration or political culture demands at any given moment, what the fuck does he stand for? I'll take it from here, Dane. Context, Cap? I thought you, like, died and shit your pants. Yeah, that was crazy, dude. So I made a wish with the cube as I died. You know, you got shot by the guy in that oversized Winter Soldier mask, and then you shit your pants. Yeah, man, when I, when I died and shit my pants, it happens to most people when they die. Laugh now, but one day you'll die and shit your pants. You know, he got the context cube. Anyway, I made a wish with the context cube that I could come back every now and then whenever I'm really needed. When you were shitting your pants? And since it's the fourth and you're talking about Captain America, you know, did you clean all the shit out of your pants at least? Did I? Come on, man, grow up. I'm trying to give you some context here. Yeah, right on. You know, go ahead. I'll take a break. Happy Independence Day, nerds. So what does Captain America stand for? Well, ironically enough, this issue and presumably the rest of the series is doing an excellent job at defining Cap's ideals. The United States of Captain America number one unites Steve Rogers, Bucky Barnes, and Sam Wilson, and later, John Walker will be joining them. Four heroes who have taken the mantle of Captain America at different points, and they come together to embark on a road trip adventure. Along the way, Steve Rogers and his allies slash successors meet some new heroes who have been inspired by the legacy of Captain America, to the point where they've taken up costumes and identities directly related to Cap. The first of the heroes that we meet in issue number one is Aaron Fisher, a gay teenager who acts as a guardian for LGBTQ youth and unhoused people. As we go through this series, we'll meet more young people across the country who have formed like a network to work together using the symbolism of Captain America to help their communities. The comic doesn't call it this explicitly, but what these new heroes and cat masks have done is create a nationwide mutual aid network helping their local communities and defending marginalized people from the hateful and violent elements that threaten to harm them. They help the poor, the unhoused, and the exploited. They help the people that superheroes like Steve Rogers have failed simply by default because they're so focused on supervillains, space Nazis, and these large cosmic battles. While those antagonists must also be fought, the consequence has been that many queer people, people of color, and poor communities have felt unseen, undefended. They've been pushed to the fringes by both malicious actors and apathetic ones. Those who simply haven't informed themselves of how the U.S. has treated those outside their own narrow interests. As I said, Aaron Fisher is a gay teen. He hops trains to travel where poverty keeps people oppressed. He protects them from the many dangers unhoused people face while offering them a glimmer of hope that someone, even just this one kid in a crappy costume, 
values them as members of society. The character's creator, Josh Trujillo, has said this about the original Captain America. Captain America has a lot to carry on his shoulders. He's a projection of our nation's hopes and strengths, but he's also a living symbol of American history. There's a lot of pain in that history, and that's something a character called Captain America always has to reckon with. Steve Rogers is the best of us. He leads with his heart, and he never gives up. I could not agree more. If this country is to survive, it must evolve. It must rise to challenges, not revel in stagnation. It must, like Captain America himself, reflect on its past and be goddamn honest about it. It's the only way to move forward if we want to maintain any sense of democracy. There are many people who don't think there's any real democracy left already. And depending on the metrics used, I might have to agree. It's hard to look at a disabled person who's been refused disability payments in the eye and tell them their existence matters to this country. And I'm not going to ask an unhoused queer person cast from their home by their parents in survival mode for years why they love American democracy. I don't know how anyone can in good conscience look at black people, descendants of slaves, and only a couple of generations after they were refused service in public businesses, refused loans, who were chased down in the streets and lynched and are still being killed by police or imprisoned for simple infractions at far higher rates and tell them that they have it as good as anyone else in this country. It takes a truly small, distorted perspective to levy that claim. But let's look at the last part of that quote. But Steve is still human. He fails at times. He can lose sight of what he's fighting for or become disillusioned. Underneath the powers and the costumes, he's just a fearless kid who desperately wants to do the right thing. Replace the name Steve Rogers with Sam Wilson, Bucky Barnes, or Aaron Fisher, and it still works. Nobody's going to literally replace Steve, at least not for long because comics are comics. But the idea is that the only thing it takes to be Captain America is the will to act in service of others. Steve doesn't get angry upon learning of this mutual aid network using his symbolism. In fact, it seems to revitalize his patriotism after the issue opens with his dour reflection. Of course, the rage baiters won't mention that. They just want you to be angry for the 4th of July so they can draw a paycheck and get your subs. In this issue, Steve Rogers provides social commentary on current events and the notion of the two different Americas. By the way, I made a video on Cap and Two Americas. You should check it out. Link in the comments. The story doesn't shy away from Captain America making observations about the country that feel just as timely today as when Cap was created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby eight decades ago. The difference now is that unlike before, the role and symbolism of Captain America can belong to not just one man, but many people of various backgrounds and various identities. Because, and I hate to be the one to break it to you if this is news, but that's exactly what America is, always has been, and as long as we fight for those ideals together, we have a chance at building an even better democracy, a better America. Captain America's ideals, in a word, can be summed up as humanist. In a world, a country that does not operate based on humanism, standing up for people without a voice, without representation, who are harmed and exploited, will be seen by some as radical. But that doesn't mean that it's wrong. And as Aaron Fisher and the others we've yet to meet in this series will show us, the humanist thing to do in such a system is find ways to help others, people in our communities as well as representatives of other communities. Countries fail people. They fail their own ideals, if they ever had any. But you and I, we can act in small ways and encourage others to do so as well. Given enough time, enough of us living by that example, Maybe America can really earn its reputation for once, rather than coast on often hollow propaganda. Steve Rogers is right in this issue. The American dream, the one that we were all sold for hundreds of years, is dead. If it was ever real for anyone besides rich white people anyway. It's past time that we move on from that false promise, based on individualism and self-interest alone. We need to work together build our own mutual aid networks, and organize for direct action. That's the way we can build an American reality. A reality in which we look out for one another, not compete. 
an American reality that cannot be easily divided by demagogues or corporate algorithms. There are links below to help you get started. Thank you, Context Cap. That was really cool of you. Happy Fourth. You know, people say we look alike, but I, I just don't see it. Alright, I see it now. <laughs>